back to my channel, bitch. My name is Tenno Merkaba. In my past two videos, I spoke about Aries and similarities with other signs and Taurus and its similarities with every other sign. And in today's video, we're doing Gemini. Yeah, let's start with Gemini and Cancer, right? Gemini and Cancers share the fact that they talk a lot. They talk a lot. And not only can they talk, but these guys are really moody. Geminis and Cancers are so fucking moody and they're like so unpredictable and it's like difficult to like figure them out, but it's difficult to keep up with them because they're so moody. These are not like people that you can rely on their mood when you know, okay, when I get there, at least she's there and she's gonna be happy because she's always the happy person. No. And that can be really frustrating for the people around them. And I know, I'm speaking because I know I'm a Gemini moon, guys. I know this firsthand. Like Nyazi, yeah, it's hectic on these ends for different reasons. Like Cancer is obviously ruled by the moon, and the moon is constantly changing. So Cancer is changing their mood just based. The Cancers change their moods based on what sign, what quarter moon, full moon, wax moon, the moon phases in, plus the zodiac sign it's in. Plus, you know what I'm saying? It's just a whole bunch. That's why Cancers be changing moods so often. Gemini's change moods because of Mercury. You know, Gemini's Gemini's change moods just based on what it is that they're thinking. Their moods are based on what it is that they're thinking. If they're thinking good thoughts, then they're gonna like eventually say those good thoughts out loud. But if they're thinking negative thoughts, you know, it depends on who's they. And obviously, it's the twins. So bitch, like, duh, you know, you're two people in one. Like, you don't know who you're gonna get. Uh, but they're really good storytellers, though, for the most part. Like, they can maybe they might exaggerate things, and maybe that's more so of the Leo and Gemini where they exaggerate stories. But they're really good storytellers. Gemini's and Cancers can tell a good story, and they know how to like be funny. They're very witty, funny people. Cancers are a lot more funnier than Gemini's. Um, I would say, but they're very, you know, both of them are like really funny people, period. Both of them are very connected to their environment also, you know, they kn just, they know people, but they know people for different reasons, like Cancer's are obviously going to connect to who you are from an emotional level, but Gemini is just like a good with social people because they rule the third house, which is like the house of familiarities and like, you know, friends and shit like that, so it's like Gemini's are friends with everybody in the world, they just don't know everybody in the world, so they can't be friends with them yet, you know what I'm saying, those vibes, so, and Cancer's like, they can just connect with people, just, they're just, very, they're just both very connected to people that are around them, and they're very good at picking up, like, okay, you're like this, you're like this, you're like this, because... This is probably the way you grew up, and because you grew up in that area, that's probably why you are the way that you are. And then moving on to um, Gemini and Leo, right? So Gemini and Leo actually have like, a lot in common. Um, they're both like, they love attention, right? But I think Gemini, they, 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 they love stimulation, right? Because that stimulation is kind of like giving them fuel. But Leo, for a different reason, Leo just wants to, you know, they are the sunlight, so they want attention in that way, or they live for center stage and also the fifth house, those vibes. But Gemini, Gemini just needs constant stimulation because, like, they're just constantly thinking and they like solving puzzles and they like solving other people's problems and giving solutions and, like, just talking and unpacking theories and like you know what i'm saying just it's if, if if someone is like hitting them with things to think about that's like my god that's heaven because it's like what the fuck what i'm thinking right now that i can actually use my brain and my brain doesn't have to use me right now you know whereas leo likes stimulation because like now they can get to whip out like a performance and you know be whatever that they want to be and just like express themselves and be funny and goofy and that's one thing that they share in common that they love having fun like these are like the childlike people so you'll find that people with like a gemini sun leo moon or leo sun gemini moon like very funny people you know they love they know how to like just you know capture people and like they're very both of them are very social conscious socially conscious people you know they're very good with people they know how to talk to people they know how to grab people's attention they know how to maintain friendships or even if it, like it's a superficial thing they're very good at like having friends and like they're very good at like you know just partying they're just good like they just know how to be social quirky butterflies you know those vibes um they're very dramatic i think the gemini's and once again like i said with the cancer one they can over exaggerate situations and stories but they just love it's just for the fact that they're getting attention and they're talking it's that stimulation once again so if they're getting a story out you know it's because the story is the gemini part but then people listening to you and giving you attention that's the leo part and that goes hand in hand in telling stories and like you know so the more dramatic a situation is people are more prone to be like 
really, bitch? They won't tell a story exactly the way it happened. It's always going to be something, you know? So they, if, if it's telling little white lies just to exaggerate the story or even like... You know what I'm saying? Like saying something happened that actually didn't happen or, you know, like leaving out something. You know, they're just gonna, if it means a good story, then they go say it. They have personalities. Now, Gemini, because they're dual, so they have different people, you know, it's two people or four or whatever, depending on the situation. Leo is just no, because, you know, perform, it's the fifth house, performance, you know, like theater, staging. So obviously with theater and staging, also because they're sextile sign, Leo knows how to like have the opportunities to use those personalities to perform and shine and like, you know, be the light and vogue or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So both of them have that fact that they can like play a role you know they're not a play role i think gemini sometimes may may be unintentionally doing that just because they're moody or they're a different person sometimes but leo can also unconsciously but consciously know they're doing that but they know they're doing that because you know they're expressing themselves and they're gonna get attention from that or you know like get a laugh from people or whatever just be goofy or funny and those are not good at listening i find gemini's and especially sun signs oh my god they're not like if you're not entertaining them they're not gonna listen to you they're gonna zone out completely i promise you i swear i swear to this guy to gemini and virgo right um now obviously the similarity that they have in common is that they're both ruled by mercury and right? mercury's thinking communicating you know analyzing all of that so both of them may overthink overanalyze overly put situation like just put dots together you know investigate things just like overly think about such did i say and overly analyze because they can overly analyze overthink and that could just lead to having mad nervous wreck they can be like very nervous people like you know they could t be the type of people that lose weight easily just because like they're just so nervous and they rule by the nerves my guy so if that's constantly working then your body is generally like over overly working itself also you know also i find gemini's and virgos very prone to smoking sun moon rising if you're like ruled by mercury or something you may be prone to smoking a lot of cds you know if you're heavily ruled by mercury like i am you'll probably be prone to smoking cds you know cds just to like take the edge off or something you know but you're full of ideas like these guys are full of ideas the only difference is that virgos is kind of like want to they want to perfect and they know how to take the necessary steps to make that idea actually work and work to perfection gemini's may not be perfectionists um they just want to like they just have the ideas but i also find that both gemini's and virgos like because they have so many ideas it can be hard to kind of focus and pin down on one particular idea obviously it depends if, if you have like capricorn or taurus in your moon or something but i'm just basically explaining the general energies of these signs you know it's not not your sun sign or anything it's just general energies and signs like that but like these guys are like they're because like they, they have so much going on so much mercurial so much thinking it may be difficult for them to actually finish a project because it's like oh my god like i've so much like i think like starting this project was cool but actually having to finish it gemini is like oh my god actually having to finish it like i'm already bored with this like i have another idea i want to do gemini virgo is like oh my god I, I can't finish this because it's like it's not perfect enough you know what i'm saying so they might sometimes even be prone to be like okay fuck i just need a break and then they never actually continue with their project and they start something else and then you know overthink why they didn't finish it and then overthink why they think they're such a failure in life and then overthink why they think all those thoughts all the time and then overthink you know virgos and gemini share the fact that they also they're also good at giving advice but like I think the advice that they give is more so detailed on like kind of cracking the code or something like they're good at they're good at like dissecting a situation analyzing it opening it seeing why it is the way like seeing how it works you know how to deep like decode it and then code it again and put it back together just to see how to do it you know they really they're so good at, it's like detective work but like on some different shit you know like differently but because mercury's there they know how to do it the same but they just know how to like decode something and like put it back together and like kind of give you a constructive solution of like okay this is how this works this is how you can fix it there you go and know how to like word that shit perfectly i think Gem gemini may be a lot more scattered because obviously there's two people but um virgo also a little bit more scattered you know because it's like wow are we 
Like, can we just get this done? Or is this, is, is this going to be done perfectly? Is, is this going to be done perfectly? If it's not, then I don't want to do it. You know, I'm just going to sit here and have a panic attack real quick. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> casually. Like, I'm just going to casually sit here and have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. They can be very, like, observant people. Virgos and Geminis will watch you. Okay, they'll watch you. They'll watch you live your life. Okay, but it's not a, it's not like on some I'm trying to peep your desires like eighth house Scorpio type shit. No, it's mostly like just analyzing you. Once again, Mercury just analyzing you, analyzing your ins and your outs, and just making out who you are. Moving on to Gemini and Libra now. So the similarity that they have is that they're air signs, right? So this is a shrine. Listen, one thing about Libras, one thing about Gemini, they will talk just like Cancers and Geminis. Libras and Gemini, I don't even know who's worse, Cancer or Libra and Gemini together, like, yes, so these guys can talk, I think, I think Libra, no, Libra is really the one to talk a lot, and not all Libras, but I know most Libras, especially if you have Libra in the 3rd house, or 7th house, or 11th house, oh my god, or even 5th house, my god, you can talk, but because of that, because they know how to talk, I think, like, they know how to make friends, you know, because they're so good at, like, socializing because they talk to themselves a lot so they know how to like relate their own thoughts to other people and obviously like thoughts be relatable because they're air signs and like i said air is everywhere so air can see any kind of perspective so these guys are very relatable like that's one thing that they share in common like they can be very relatable people you know i think that relatability can also be translated into flirting so they can be you know um what says they can be bashed or they can be accused of being big flirts and you know what fuck it they probably are and you know how to put words together and say it in a very luring seductive way you know but they for the most part they just know how to make friends like they know how to they know how to work themselves in and like in and out of social situations you know they know how to like start a conversation and then get right out of a conversation both of them are very inconsistent people Gemini's and Libras, one thing about Gemini's and Libras, they will be inconsistent. Doesn't matter how old you are. Some way, some shape, or form, you're gonna be inconsistent in some way. Okay, maybe when you get older, it's a bit different, because my mom is like a Libra and she's. No. Actually, no, I'm capping. No. It's still there with you, yeah. And see, the thing is with Libras and Gemini's, it's because they don't have time management. I think they suck at time management. And I'm just talking about the general energies, guys. Don't take this personally to you if you're a Gemini sign or Libra and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm a very consistent person. Because obviously you may have like Taurus or Capricorn or whatever. I'm just talking about the general energies, you know. Geminis and Libras are just like, they suck at time management. They can be prone to always being late, you know, just because in their head, like they can do everything all at once within 10 minutes knowing that they have to be somewhere in like 15 minutes they think they can do everything in 10 minutes and then get there in five minutes like what the fuck what do you what what do you think this is bruh and that's something like they can do they can be delusional in that way oh also they're very sneaky oh my god they're so sneaky gemini's and libras can be very fucking sneaky people they can be like like very like they can do some things like behind people's back and then like know how to cover up that situation just based on how they say something like for example like if a gemini or tour i mean gemini or a, a libra like for example let's say at a party and they hooked up with someone and let's say uh, they don't want people to know about that you know and then a friend asks where were you right because obviously you disappeared for a mad long because you're hooking up with someone so your friend is like where were you now as a gemini and libra let's say you're hooking up with someone that you know you shouldn't have been hooking up with right so like let's say after you hooked up with someone you went outside to smoke or you went outside to get a you know something you won't tell your friend, no, I hooked up with someone. You'll just tell your friend you did that other thing. So you'll just leave out pieces of information, you know. And in that way, you're sneaky. You're fucking sneaky. They can be very idealistic in love, you know. They can be very much prone to loving the idea of someone, you know. Water signs are prone to loving kind of the imagination of someone. But I think air signs are more prone to loving the idea can be very idealistic people believers in especially if it's in the moon sign it can be very chaotic people just like very chaotic because you know not reliable not trustworthy only there for a good time they're literally libras and gemini's are there for a good time and when things get heavy it's like ugh. and that's also one thing they share in common when things get heavy it's like don't don't look at them because Okay, moving on to Gemini and Scorpio, right? So I, they don't have a lot of things in common, 
But the things that they do have in common is that they both can be very sneaky also. They can also be very sneaky. They can also have that thing where they like hide their true styles and then show a persona to the outside world, you know? For different reasons, because like Scorpio is obviously like protecting who they are from being vulnerable from the world and whatever. But Gemini is really doing that because they're actually just like two people in one. I think Gemini does, they change. But sometimes they don't know they're changing, whereas Scorpio will be a lot more alert of like knowing, okay, outside world, they're gonna get this side of me. And then like, when you get closer, you'll know like the other side of me. Whereas Gemini is like constantly changing, constantly showing the world that, hey guys, you do, you will never know who I really am because I'm always changing. And also for the fact that they are like the most hated sign, Gemini and Scorpios are like two of the most, actually not even two of the most, they are like the hated signs. Like no one fucks with this energy at all. <laughs> it is what it is. And also for that fact, they can be very confusing people like they just very confused because you just never know what the fuck is going on with them internally for real you just don't know who they are because they're always like changing or not changing gemini is always changing but scorpio is always hiding i would say that but they kind of would present itself in the same way because once you get to know them you realize like you actually never really knew them like that and both of them are very good at analyzing people and knowing people they're very good, like they're good observers. Gemini's and Scorpios are very good observers, just like Virgos and Scorpios. Very, very, just you know, very good at observing people. So we move on to Gemini and Sagittarius. Once again, this is a the opposition that actually has a lot more in common than any other, like like the Aries, Libra, or like the Virgo, Pisces opposition. I mean, both of them are fucking scattered. Gemini and Sagittarius are fucking scattered. Both of them love learning. They love exploring things, you know. And because like they're so sc they're scattered because like they don't know how to kind of fixate or like situate themselves still in a situation to get to kind of know all of its ramifications like in and out and like you know spend a lot of time with it because i think with them it's like once they kind of have a sense of who you are they can kind of paint a picture of who you are and then it's like okay now that i figured you out or now that i thought i figured you out i can move on you know because it's like that whole i get bored quickly syndrome like they both get really bored quickly and they change a lot also they're both unreliable like don't rely on them to always like call up your phone because the thing with them is they love variety right? and they love freedom they love freedom and they love variety and once things get like consistent they get bored because obviously the sixth house is squaring them so that's something they have to learn from virgo is to like you know have some kind of routine stability thing you know um, but for the most part, they may struggle with that because you know, they really be bored quickly. Like, they just want to learn new things. And it's like, there's so many things in the world to learn. Like, why not just hop on that shit and learn things, you know? Why? Like, if I've already analyzed or if I've already kind of painted a picture of a situation, person, or thing, and I kind of already know some things about it, I can already, you know, like, I can use... It's like, they, they somewhat live in their mind and I can, like complete a journey just by their minds and it's like okay if i can do this with my mind then i've already completed that chapter of my life so let's move on to something that i have not analyzed you know these are the type of people that wouldn't mind moving a lot like if that to move and start over all the time they probably wouldn't they'd love that i think i think they love that shit you know they'd love to move out of like stay in a house stay in a country for maybe a year or something or like a few months and then move to another country and then you know what i'm saying just that type of thing like if that sounds like heaven to i know for a tourist it would be like no it's not too or even a cancer would be like no but for a gemini it's such a terrace oh my god it's like wow i have to i get to move to different places get to eat different food meet different people lovely yeah so in that way they can also be very unreliable people I like just don't rely on them to always provide that same energy for you because the broad trust me gemini's and sagittarius are gemini is moody but sagittarius is just don't want to feel like they always have to give that same energy because they want to have the freedom to do whatever the fuck they want to do that's the thing like they don't take things seriously sometimes and that can be an issue you know like being irresponsible and not taking responsibility for things like i think having big responsibilities from for them is like 
it's so icky and heavy and it doesn't it feels like it doesn't allow them free i'm maybe this is also just like you know because i'm young and shit like that but i feel like for them obviously we're gonna have to grow up and like obviously be responsible but for the most part it's like do i want to be responsible do i enjoy this no i'd much rather be traveling you know just doing whatever the fuck i want you know if it wasn't for like how the world is i feel like gemini's and sagittarius would just be all over you know it can be careless people just very careless sometimes sometimes they can be like mean for fun word vomit that word they can just like splur out words and not really consider like if it's rude or not just because they want to say things <laughs> they're just like saying things really moving on to gemini and capricorn now i feel like gemini and capricorn really don't have much in common i swear to god they don't have much in common the only thing that i wrote down that they do in common is that they can both be very rude you can just be both very rude with their words you know just be careless but i think gemini can sometimes be unconscious of it a capricorn will know what they're doing they'll know most of the time moving on to um gemini and aquarius so obviously these are air signs once again you know air air trying gang vibes both of these guys are going to be overthinkers but one thing that they have a lot more in common than the libra one is that gemini and aquarius are very quirky they're so fucking quirky and eccentric you know what i'm saying they're like you know fairy bunnies that wear weird things and like match weird pat like polka dots with like stripes and like different like purple and purple and and red you know but bright purple and bright red and it's just like why would you mix those colors together why would you do that so icky i feel like they just know how to make quirky weird things just cool and like kind of included in their own personalities because these people are very paradoxical that's one thing that they share in common they're very very fucking paradoxical people oh my god well, they say one thing they do another they do another they say one thing very rebellious also like also a situation where they don't like being told what to do because you know they like being free that's one thing that's a theme for gemini and aquarius and sagittarius is freedom because they're assigned they're ghost like they're prone to ghosting people we all know what ghosting means. you just like disappear from people conversations get bored get definitely aquarius gemini's get bored very quickly and then last but not least we have gemini and pisces now gemini and pisces guys this is a square that has a lot of shit in common both of them are mutable signs right so we know mutable means adapting right so these are chameleons gemini's and pisces are so like they're good at camouflaging themselves in situations around people with people and both of them have duality like pisces is the two fish gemini you know the two the twins you know what i'm saying so it's just like chaotic i think these are top two chaotic signs if i'm like if I'm being dead ass right now yo my guy they're just two people in one you know they, they don't know if they're coming or going <sighs> oh my god you know also same with the aquarius and pisces i mean aquarius and gemini where it's like they're very paradoxical in their nature you know um both of it both pisces and gemini are very good at like creating or living in this bubble of fantasy and creative and just like a bubble that is outside of reality and they love living in that bubble because anything is possible they you know you can just think a thought and like just live that thought for pisces it's like they can you know um arise a fantasy or an imagination and just like really live that imagination or dream out for them you know so they're very i think both of them are very good at like living in a bubble of rose glass tinted life i think because like they're so mutable you know they can get like it's easily it's very and because they're so chaotic they're chaotic because it's so easy for them to like pick up on people's senses now gemini will pick up on pe people's senses based on their an analysis of people you know and they're so like they're so because they they get into people's brain a lot and even like knowing that shit like they can get into five different brains thinking so many thoughts so quickly right it can get really chaotic because it's like where the fuck did these thoughts come from right for pisces it's the same shit only with the feeling like they step into a room feel five different people's feelings or feel the whole room's feeling and be like holy shit like why am i feeling so overwhelmed with these feelings you know gemini would feel like i'm so overwhelmed with these thoughts so then gemini gets nervous and then pisces would get overwhelmed with those emotions they get tired 
and that's why they go to bed they want to sleep <laughs> they just want to fucking sleep because it's like oh fuck no i'm not dealing with this shit no way both of them are really good with going with the flow you know but for different reasons hey, gemini will go where the wind takes them and pisces will go with the flow but that's like really the same thing you just go where the party's at you know where the vibes are at yeah yeah, and they're very deceiving because of that duality nature. They can deceive people, you know, they can put people in illusions. Gemini will make some, they'll make you think whatever they want you to think, and a Pisces will make you kind of, will like present an illusion of how you feel about them or how you see them in that sense, you know. But you don't know that they have a whole other dual side to them, you know what I'm saying? They can both be crazy. I think these are the top two crazy signs be really fucking oh deemed as crazy just because they have two people you know it's like psychotic bitch oh my god what the fuck it can be very fucking careless people you know just messy just messy with just very careless you know they get influenced easy also because they're so they're so like mutable they can get easily influenced you know because once again they go with the flow or go with the wind you know so it's like it can sometimes be easily manipulated also and like they can be overly passive just because it's like hey let's see what gemini is curious and then pisces is like yo man let's just you know yo man whatever bro so anyway that's the end of this video thank you so much for joining me once again thank you so much to all my new subscribers all the people that have gotten readings from me please check out my other channel avocado man where i do other things that are not astrology check out my astrology ig where i do like astrology forecasts and shit like that like telling me what's going to be happening and with the energies and shit like that. and then if you want to ring for me you know hit me up on my ig and i'll send you a menu and other than that i'll see you in my next video i'll talk about cancer and cancer's similarities with every other sign <laughs> okay